been here at the merchandise show this weekend and run into people and they're like, oh, you're teaching this or that. And uh, certainly in that I've given a lot of golf lessons over the past few years, people uh, have, have taken a lot of third hand lessons. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I hope my methodology is as simple as I, I believe that when you set up, I really want to swing the head of the club Show me. on the shaft plane. So when I, when I set up, whatever it is that I set up where the shaft angle comes up from the head, I want to let my club swing in a circle, just like I would swing a golf club back in a circle on the shaft plane. Uh, if you do that, that creates a curve at the bottom. A lot of people are focused when they hit a putt on, let's keep the path of the head along the target line. Uh, that's certainly a, a method that works for some folks. It wasn't how I was taught. It wasn't really what, where I go when I teach people or what I look for. So when I'm looking for the head swinging on this curve, well, I'm also looking at what does the face do. I believe you're, you're going to be most efficient if the face swings along that curve where the face stays at 90 degrees to the curve. And certainly people's, uh, I, I hear a lot of people say, oh, you swing it. Uh, open door, open, closed door, closed door, you know, open the gate, close the gate. Well, you know, it doesn't really work like that because the heel swings, a, a door has one hinge. Well, my whole putter face is swinging along that curve. Uh, another, another big piece, and I have talked about this and will continue to, what do the forearms? Well, if a person is coming at their stroke where the face is shut to open, then I'm going to have them work on what their forearms do. It's going to have a feel of opening and closing, and certainly it feels extensively in that direction if they've been going the other way. But we need to keep it as simple as we swing on plane, and we're going to keep the face angle or the face aim square to that curve. Okay. The three keys. Let's keep it simple. Three keys to good putting. Take notes at home. Here we go. Your uh, three just, keys. Just, just three. Well, how many do you have? Do you have five? Uh, I can never keep up. All right. But we'll give you two or three. Okay. One, I want to teach a fundamental grip. Okay. And when I'm teaching tour players, you're, you're hesitant to change their grip. Some guys, you just realize they're going to stay with their grip. But the more lessons I give, when I show people what's called reverse overlap grip, which means I'm, re I'm overlapping my left index finger instead of my right pinky finger like a golf swing. But the key to the grip is I'm trying to get the shaft of the putter to run up my lifelines or along the angle of my forearm. So when I hold on to it with both hands in the lifeline, then you can see from the back angle that the shaft is coming right up my forearm. Okay. If my hands are low, then there's a little dip. If my hands are high, then it's arched. I want to set up with this grip and have the shaft and my forearms align. Also, when I hold this grip, it allows the top of my forearms to align parallel to my target. So that's a good fundamental setup position. Right. Uh, another big tip is, okay, how are we going to let our body naturally swing on this tilted plane? A key there is to understand when your shoulders move in the stroke, they move around your spine. So that allows your body to move freely without really affecting your head. If, you, if your shoulders tilt too much, it'll push on your head. It'll cause your head to move. Uh, the third thing is really, I want this stroke to be athletic. To allow it to be athletic, like if I was going to pitch a ball, I would probably pitch a ball mostly with my arm. Wouldn't be all of anything, but I would have freedom to swing my arms. When I teach people to putt, I'll often say, okay, let's set up in our posture and swing your arms. Well, the reaction I get is, I said, swing your arms. That's moving your body, okay? So I want people to realize they have shoulder joints and elbow joints. We want those soft enough to when we swing the head back, there's freedom, there's motion in those joints that gives us better feel and touch. What about impact position? Here you go. An another big key and a problem that I see quite often, and, and it might have been a little bit of what happened to Jose yesterday, is if a person is, is set up where their shaft is back, well, that leads to taking the grip back first. But for sure, if a person returns to impact and the shaft or the grip end is behind the putter head, they're, they're hitting up and they're kind of scooping the ball. It's important to me to get, get a player to actually return the putter back to impact 
and have the shaft lean toward the hole or forward pressed as little as a half a degree. But the key is I want them to feel like they're pressing down on the ball. You know, I, I, I debate over whether I really mean for them to hit down or, or not, but it certainly feels that way for someone who's been scooping it. So I like to see set up, have a touch of forward press and then return back to the ball so that when they have impact, they feel like they're pressing down through the ball. Okay. Before we go to our first break, is there one thing of those fundamentals that you just talked about, one thing that stands out above all others? Uh, probably the arm swing. The arm swing. I see people far too rigid. They they look like, you know, nothing nothing to do with the head moves unless their body moves. That's not terribly athletic. Okay. I think it also helps for guys like Randall Chambly to be putting at the proper sized hole. Is that correct too? You know, it, it, he was going at that about a half a size cup out there, and you know, you, that's maybe a good place to practice from if you're real close to build your confidence, not from very far away. 